start. Uh, Bruce, you, I'm sure you got a few to pick from, but what's your favorite Mike McGraw memory? Well, I, I, I got to think it's the, the Creighton game um, in the NCAA tournament. And, um, you know, just, you know, he rose up and played at a really, really high level. The, the corner three and then the three right before half, it was a, it was quite a, it was a bomb. And, um, you know, to, the thing I felt so good about, because I, I felt bad that whole year because, you know, he came in hurt. He had the bad bone bruise that really lasted almost a year from his high school you know through uh through December and then finally he got to practice with us and you know I I you know he kept saying I I I will come out of redshirt coach if something happens and we need it and you know that's when Cam goes down and gets Texas Tech at Texas Tech and uh, you know I went to him and his father and I just said hey I I you don't have to do this. It's late. I, you know, and I, I'll be honest at that time, you know, Cartier was still a little inconsistent and, you know, I, I didn't know, but obviously Cartier stepped up and then I always felt bad because Mike's minutes were, you know, pretty limited, but um, you know, then, you know, we have the Dean goes down and things change again. And then he has the, the huge game against uh, Creighton. I mean, he said, you know, the Oklahoma game, obviously last year, year on what would have been his real senior day um, this is a super senior day I guess uh, but that was that was special too and uh, just a good good young man uh, you know just he's been a good representative for K-State um, he's endured a lot he's been part of some really special things a lead eight run a big big 12 championship and then uh, you know had to help us fight through last year with the you know, with the young guys and the COVID and, and, you know, it wasn't easy for him, but he's, he's persevered. And, you know, I know he wants to play. I, I'm sure he'll get a chance to play, you know, for a while. And, and then, you know, I know whatever he does after that, he'll be successful in life. Just to, as I said, a good, good young man with a big heart. And uh, switching gears, if Marquise is out again, this game, have you learned, did you learn anything at Texas Tech about, playing without him that you can use against OU? I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of ironic because it's uh, the uh, Oklahoma game seems like an eternity ago. Um, you know, that was the, you know, we, the big guys were, if you go back and watch the film, you know, our big guys missed dunks, fell down, missed layups, had layups blocked where they never should have happened. And then uh, they get home and, you know, one after the other says, I don't feel well. I got body aches. I got, and that was the start of the COVID. And, um, you know, and then we didn't have Marquise at that time. And now we come back, you know, uh, you know, two months later and, and, you know, you don't have Marquise again. So it's kind of ironic, um, you know, but I, you know, we, it, it makes it a little tougher on Nigel uh, because now, you know, it's good that he, he can obviously do things with the ball. He can be point guard, but for scoring, you know, it's hard to, for him to deliver to himself. So, you know, we just got to find out some ways to, to get him some shots because he's, he's our best shooter. I mean, it's, it's, it's plain and simple, factual. It's, it's, you know, statistic wise and everything. So we got to find ways to get him some shots, um, you know, with him off the ball and, and, I thought Selton was better uh, the other night and, and, you know, I, I hope a little boost of confidence for him. Um, you know, obviously Mike played really well, uh, you know, and I thought it was Ish's best effort. Uh, you know, the physic, the, it's, that's a physical team and, and they got so many good athletes and they play so hard. And, you know, I thought Ish really stood up to them. And he actually got some rebounds in traffic. He, he was the leader on the play hard chart for the first time all year. Um, you know, so, it, he, you know, he did a nice job with, with that. Um, you know, in that game, the only bad stretch was right before a half. And they had a plus 10 in that, in that you know, last TV timeout. And, um, that, that was obviously the difference in the game, if you really look at it, you know, because if we, you know, maybe we'd stop that rally, maybe the, the, our comeback in the second half isn't as quite as, you know, uphill. But, 
you know, we had a chance against a really good team in a really tough place where they'd been under, they were undefeated. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good showing, just sad for our guys that we couldn't find a way to win. And uh, last one for me, can, can you clarify where you guys are at and the possibility of playing on Monday against the new opponent? Uh, we've, we've talked about it and we're still in the process uh, of trying to work something out. Um, you know, hopefully by, you know, later today, we'll know, we'll know if there's that opportunity is out there still. Is it it's, it's difficult because I think I mentioned, um, you know, one, you got to find a team that also has a, a free game, you know, or not a free game, an open game because of COVID. Um, there's teams that there's lots of teams around the country that are there, but you, they put in a new rule um, a year ago. And I didn't even know it that you, you cannot play a regular season game after your tournament. So, you know, most of the mids and lows all start their tournament uh, this this week or, you know, you got teams starting their tournament early next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. So, you know, it, they were it's just going to have to align. Uh, and our coaches have worked really hard. Uh, they've been on the phone with a lot of people and, and you know, we'll we'll see if it if it works out. It is a deal where if you win, you might play it. and If you lose, you wouldn't. I think it's more that, you know, can we get a game? I think that's okay. the most important thing. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Good luck on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, next question to Wyatt. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Coach, you touched a little bit there on Ish, and that was uh, really my question in terms of just your thoughts of, of his growth and what that game can mean to him confidence wise moving forward we've, we've talked all year about the fact that he still has, has two years to go after this and as he gets stronger maybe he can have more games like he did the other night just kind of give me a sense of what you're thinking about that and how it can help him going forward yeah I, I went recruiting Tuesday and Wednesday and and I, I called you know tried to check in with some of the guys I called him and I just you know I told him exactly what I just told you guys that I thought it was his best effort um, you know he was physical he he was you know didn't give in, you know, whether it was in the posty or on switches on out on the court. And, and he just said, coach, I, I'm starting to understand what it's about. And, um, you know, thing coach Southwell brings up, he is not a, he didn't play basketball a lot until late. And, and he's all, a lot of this is new uh, to him. He's got, you know, he had his couple of years at Wake Forest, a few years in high school, but he, he's still a young basketball player, even though he's older, he's still a young basketball player trying to figure it out. But you, you brought up a good, a, a key word stronger. And then that's, that's going to be, um, you know, I, and you know, it's, we kept telling him last spring last, or last summer and last fall, you know, you got to be stronger. And, and he just didn't understand it. And, it, and our, our game, and he said it, our, the big, big 12 is way different than the ACC. And, you know, it is, it's just, it is, it's just every conference is different. Uh, the physicality, I, you know, of the game is so different. And, um, and then he's also, I think the thing you brought up too, is you just, yeah, I think in his mind, he's a shooter, but you can impact the game in other ways. And he, and he did the other night, um, you know, one of, one of the things he's got to do is score around the hoop also, because he is pretty long. He, you know, he's not big and bulky, but he is long. And, and we need him, you know, finish a couple of those uh, layups around the hoop. And, and when he's had, when he's done that, like I, at Iowa State, he had a couple put back, you know, a couple layups, you know, that that's big for us. Those baskets, because we haven't obviously gotten much out of our, our post guys inside. My last question would be about Harkless and, and that loss for Oklahoma, what that means. How were they different? Um, he, he just, from, from my perspective, he seemed to be kind of, when he got hurt, kind of like the heart of their team or the heart and soul of their team. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. And, and if you look at our game, he had 22 and four for four from three and, um, you know, made the, the go ahead basket. Um, you know, down the stretch, you got fouled on Mike on it, you know, by Mike on a drive to the baseline. Uh, you know, he played hard. He plays so hard, uh, you know, and he does, he does give a, a great deal. I, I think you're right. The hardest of the team, but you know, you still, I think it's Goldwire's really 
because of it, he's been doing more. Um, you know, Hill still, Hill's the one that scares me. And then Groves just is that versatile big guy that, you know, if, if he gets going from three, you know, he changes uh, the whole dynamic of the game and your defensive system. And, um, you know, so it's, they still got some weapons. They, they played with people without them. I think they had to figure it out. Like Kel has said, how did, you know, did you figure something out without Marquise? Uh, you know, I think they, their first couple games after Harkless got hurt, you can look at their scores. They had to figure it out. And now they, they figured it out. And, uh, you know, they're, uh, uh, the brother is starting to play better, a little more confident, uh, Tanner's brother. And, uh, you know, so they, they, they're, they're going to be, it's going to be a tough challenge. There's no doubt. Uh, but I'm sure they're missing Harkless is, you know, if you look at our game stat wise, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, but we're missing Marquise too. And that's important to us. Uh, next question to Michael. Yeah, Bruce, how close has Mark Smith come to checking all the boxes and being the, the model uh, transfer portal guy for you guys? I mean, it's amazing. Um, you know, you know, I think at Texas Tech, you know, they've had they got they've had some pretty good fortune, um, you know, with their guys. But for Mark, uh, you know, as far as fitting in, wanting to be here, Wyatt interviewed him last night on the radio show. Uh, I, I mean, that kid's just happy and he'd love to keep playing here. Um, you know, just his experience here has been, uh, you know, so positive, uh, you know, for him, but also for us. And, uh, you know, why I brought up the stadio, if, if he finishes here strong, he could be the first, the smallest player ever in history to uh, lead the big 12 in rebounding. He's leading in double doubles and not only the, I think it's eight double doubles wide. I think those maybe exactly, but um, you know, he's also had, I believe it's five games with nine rebounds and of those five, three of those, he had double figures. So if he would have got one more rebound in each of those games, you know, he'd even be, you know, he'd be up 10, 11. So that's, it's impressive uh, what he's done. And I, I, and he's, he's continued to improve. He wants to get better. Um, I, I, and I can't tell you how many times he comes up and either tells me he's sorry because he didn't help the team enough or how can I do this better or what can I do better? And my message to him yesterday, just please play hard, enjoy it and play hard and let everything else go. I think he's finally, you know, it's, it's kind of hit him a little bit. He doesn't want it to end. And, uh, you know, but he's made the most of the, the year. There's no doubt about that. And expounding upon that, what kind of feedback have you gotten as a staff from Mark as far as uh, what his experience at K-State has been? Oh, I, I think you can ask him, but I get not only him, but his parents. Uh, uh, you know, I get uh, his parents send me text messages at least at least once a week and sometimes two or three times a week and just thank me, um, you know, just – you know, they keep saying they, they wish they would have had listened in the first place and come in the first place. But, um, and Mark has just been, you know, so happy. I mean, he, like I said, he told Wyatt last night, those are, you know, I, I think if you ask him, I mean, it's just been a really, really positive experience for him. I, I think Ish loves it. I think Marquise loves it. It's been, it's been good. Uh, you know, we've been very, we were very fortunate. And it was, it was definitely, I told you guys from the beginning, it was definitely one of my worries. You know, would they fit in? Would they want to be here? They're older. You know, would they blend in? But they they blended in. I, I took them the main event last Sunday when we got to Lubbock and uh, let them play games. Um, I, you know, I, I guess that was the best preparation. Just get them to relax and enjoy it and have a team bonding thing. And Mark was running around with, you know, Selton and playing laser tag and, you know, all those little games there, and like, just like a little kid. And I, it, it, I'm i walking around. I just, you know, for me, it just brought a smile to my face, uh, you know, to see him and see the other, you know, see him all get along. And Mark brought that up last night and Mike brought it up, how, how close knit, you know, when everyone says, how can you guys be so resilient? 
I think it's because the, they enjoy each other. They care about each other. Uh, they bought into what we, we've done. You know, we haven't won the two or three extra games that maybe would have been a difference at this at this point. But uh, they keep coming back because they they're there for each other and and believe in and believe in the system. And with your with uh, your bigs, especially Davion, are you kind of the point where it's just give me 12 or 15 minutes going hard and uh, whatever else we get is gravy? Well, I, I give Davion credit. Um, I was disappointed. I told him after Iowa State, I didn't, you know, I, um, you know, he, I thought he could have given us a little more. And uh, I told him, I just need you to play hard. And in, in the six minutes he played the other day, he had six on the play hard chart. So that, that's pretty productive. Uh, so, you know, if he, if he just does that, it's, it's going to be helpful for us. There's no doubt about that. And, and that, that was my message to him. He came in yesterday and said, you know, just appreciate it, coach. Appreciate you keep, you know, believing in me. And, and, um, you know, I, I, you know, he knows he has to be better and, you know, that, you know, we can't change what's happened, but, you know, we can play hard here to finish it. Thank you, coach. Yeah. Uh, next question to Missy. Hi coach. Good morning. Um, as you look at kind of, in conjunction with your post game and you look at this Oklahoma group, um, they create some matchup problems for you, especially when you play smaller um, and a lot of pick and pop and they're going to spread the floor. So what are the defensive keys for you guys headed into tomorrow? Um, not only looking at that first film, going back to the very first game of big 12 play, but then also thinking about how your roster and, and your substitution patterns have changed over the course of the last 17 games. You know, it's uh, it's funny you mentioned about matchups because about midnight the other night I was recruiting and watching film and when I landed I the, I text the coaches and and I said my biggest worry is matchups and you know what we're going to do with that uh, but actually I think when we play small it actually helps us uh, I'm worried about playing big uh, you know with with Groves because he's out on the court if you look at Kansas, their Kansas games, I mean, they had trouble playing McCormick uh, a lot of minutes uh, because he just, you know, their, their defensive schemes and how, well, how he plays puts big guys in bind. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to play those big guys. I, you know, you can't play the ish the 40 minutes. I don't think he has it in him, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll do some different things. I mean, we, I don't know if you noticed, we put Mark on Williams <laughs> to start the game and put uh, Ish on uh, O'Banner, the, the big kid, you know, the forward, um, you know, so, you know, I think Mark gives us that versatility. Um, Ish gives us some versatility, um, you know, moving forward with, you know, how we're going to guard people, but, but we got to do a good job on, you know, I still, I worry about Hill. They'll post them up, especially in key times. Um, and then goal wires is, is since, Harkless is gone, and it was a, there was a point where the backup point guard uh, was injured, and they had to stick with Goldwire. I think it allowed – he gave him a lot more freedom, and he's playing a lot more confidence, and he's really – he's going to the hoop, and, and we're going to have to stay in front of him. That would be – you know, was, uh, you know, Selton's going to be real key on that one because uh, we can't let him get in the lane because he, he can cause problems for you. Um, one more for you, just on the offensive end. I know coming out of that Texas Tech game, you talked about pace on offense and trying to control things. How important will that be tomorrow, especially if you don't have Marquise and you most of the ball handling is going to end up with Miguel and Nigel Pack and, and Mike McGurl? Well, you know, the pace I talked about was more um, not going into the lane frantically because they're in the lane. You know, we wanted to space them, spread them, skip it, move the ball. And, and then when you go in the paint and attack closeouts, um, you had to go with a good pace and, and not charge. And we only had one charge in, in each game that we played Texas Tech. And it was Mike McGurl on the baseline both times. But, you know, I thought that gave us a chance because they, I don't know, somebody said they averaged four or five charges a game at home. Um, and we didn't, you know, those are big plays, uh, especially we had foul trouble as it was. And, uh, you know, so the pace tomorrow is, I, I think we got to push it. I, I think we have to get, 
they're very good in half court defense. Uh, they scheme, they ice things, they, they switch a lot. Uh, so if you look at our second half against them, the first time we got some transition, we got some, you know, threes out of transition. We got some layups out of transition and we kind of played a little different basketball. We had to get Mark in the paint a little bit, um, you know, inside, outside, we did some of that. Uh, so I think at a pace we have to, I'm not saying jacket, but we got to get some transition and not let them get set up because when they get set up, they do a great job of scheming and protecting the paint. And, uh, you know, it's been a big thing is just to, you know, for us to get points in the paint and get in the paint. If we, when we do that, we win. You know, last game, the big factor, if you look at the stats, was, was second chance points. And, uh, you know, we can't let it be such a big factor. They had three threes off of offensive rebounds inside out. And, and you know, you think about a, a game like that, nine points, it's huge when it came down to the last, last shot. Uh, next question to Kellis. One thing, one other thing I want to ask you, Bruce. Um, I know the goal here is to, you know, win out, make the NCAA tournament, go out in a blaze of glory. If you fall just short and you're invited to the NIT or something like that, would you guys view that as a nice consolation prize? Oh, there's no doubt. I, I, I want these guys to have a chance to play in postseason. And, and you know, I, I've said all along, I, I think we're, we're good enough to be an NCAA team. Um, you look at all the teams and in, in that there's so many teams battling. Um, I was hoping if we would have, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like, you know, you win two, three more games, you got a chance. Um, you know, obviously we lost the overtime and the heartbreaker and another heartbreaker. And, um, you know, but I was hoping that our, our schedule rating, which is still, I think it's top. Somebody said it might end up number one. I don't know where it'll end up, but, uh, uh, you know, it's going to end up pretty in the top five, I think, in the net difficulty. Uh, the number of quad one uh, opponents, I think, is going to be the – we could have the most. Uh, and then, you know, we still have, I think, four or five quad one wins. Uh, you know, so we got a lot of things that are on our side. Uh, but I would like these guys, uh, you know, to have a chance to play in something. It's, you know, the obviously our goal is still the NCA, but uh, – you know, we, we talked now, let's have a great week starting tomorrow. Let's have a special March week and see if we can change the tides and the outcomes. And, uh, you know, but if, if, if it comes to NIT, you know, again, it's not what our goal was, but at the same time, it would give these guys, a, a you know, a nice experience and, and some reward them for something for what they've, how they persevered and, and all they've gone through. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Uh, back to Michael. Yeah, Bruce, have you been enabled an opportunity to uh, review the officiating with the, with the Big 12 office uh, during the course of the week? <laughs> I mean, I, I did contact them, which I usually don't, but, you know, nothing's going to change. It's just, it is what it is. Uh, it, you know, I, it's funny. I saw, I told this on the radio show last night. I got to the hotel late the other night. Um, after recruiting and I saw the Bucks in the heat play and there was a really almost similar play where they threw a inbound to a Butler and somebody came from behind and he fell down and, you know, they didn't call foul and, and it was a tie up. The Bucks got the ball, went down the court, scored to win the game. And, uh, you know, it, it's funny, this game, they, they uh, you know, they call foul in our game, but they don't in that one. But, you know, just the, my whole point of story was listening to, uh, the coach of the Heat, uh, you know, he came on. He said, "I could rant and rave about the officials. It's not going to change, and and you just got to move forward and worry about why we lost the lead, or you know, how can we be better? And that's all we can worry about. That's the only thing that's going to change. So we we got to help ourselves and uh, not put ourselves in those tough situations." Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, question to Grant. Hey, Coach. Um, I don't know how much it's on your mind, but the you're three wins away from 500 uh, career wins. Is that is that something you ever think about? I know Mike said you haven't brought it up to the team at all, 
Um, so I'm just wondering if that's something that's in the back of your mind. Oh, I, I'll be honest. I, I didn't know, I didn't know where I was. Uh, um, you know, I know why it mentioned it early in the year, but, uh, you know, it's, it, to me, the most important thing is just our guys and, you know, what they, how they bought in, how they believed and how they've worked and, you know, they keep coming back and, you know, that's the most important thing. I just want to get some more wins. So, so they get a chance to what we just talked about with Kellis, just that we have a chance to play in uh, a postseason, uh, you know, of some sorts. I, I, for them, I, they deserve it. And I hope we can, I hope it works out that way. That's, that's my, definitely my prayer for today that for those guys that for Mark, for Mike, for Nigel, uh, Marquise, all the ish, everybody, all the guys, what they've, what they've, how they've come together and made it. It's been fun to coach. And uh, obviously we've, we've had heartbreak after heartbreak. And, uh, but uh, you know, if, you know, if they, if they could find a way to come back and have a great finish, and get in a postseason, that would be the most most important thing for me. And then um, is Marquise's injury uh, bad enough that he just can't play in the Oklahoma game at all? Or are you trying to save him for the Big 12 tournament? Um, it, again, I would. it's up to, you know, it's you never play somebody or force somebody to play. And I told him that, you know, he's got to feel good about himself. That it, and, he's, and he's got to get to the point where he can practice to, uh, you know, he did a little more yesterday and ran and, you know, got some shots up, you know, see what he can do today. Um, and then we'll make a decision uh, where he's at. But, you know, there it was, you know, I thought after the game, I was hoping it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, it was probably a little worse than we had anticipated. So that, that sadly, and, and those things are really tricky. Um, you know, I've had one and I, I, you know, but I had a lot of swelling in black and blue and I probably ripped my whole thing and it took me a while to get back. But, um, you know, his isn't that bad, but it's probably a little more than a, maybe just a little tweak. So you know, hope, hope for his sake, you know, and he's able to come back here, whether it's tomorrow or, or next week, because uh, it would be nice for, you know, to have him. Obviously, he helps us and uh, also to you know, for his sake, too, to finish the season. Thank you, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you.